Good evening, or good maybe good evening. morning, ah, or maybe yes. <laughs> maybe good afternoon. Oh, welcome to a special edition of Coffee with the Clares. We are so excited to be back with you, aren't we, Claire? We are, and like you say, this one is a very, very special one. It is our very first global live, so we are currently live on YouTube, uh, European YouTube, American YouTube, we've got the UK Facebook and our um, American Facebook going. So I can see the comments absolutely flying in with everyone telling us where they're from. So Me hello too. everyone. <laughs> Yeah, it's so exciting. I mean, welcome. If you've never caught an episode of Coffee with the Clares, uh, basically we love to talk photography, we love to talk kit, um, and we have got some lovely things lined up for you tonight. Uh, you're right, Claire. Should we do a quick few hellos? Or no, do the T's and C's first, okay. Claire. Go okay. straight in with the T's and C's. So every live that we do, um, we always like to remind everyone, don't click on any links that aren't posted by Olympus, be that Olympus Europe, Olympus uh, America or Olympus UK. Do not click any links. These are all free live streams um, and you do not have to pay for any of them. Yes, they are. Uh, we, we're getting popular and, and you do get the scammers in there. Stay away from those. Stick with us. Um, as I said, you know, as Claire says, all our lives are free. Um, why don't you do a few hellos, Claire? Let's have a look. I mean, it's Ooh, so exciting. Okay. <laughs> so the, li the little symbol means YouTube, right? Yes, so yes. We how have, exciting. Uh, we have a lot of people on YouTube. Um, we've got Sean from Atlanta. Um, we have got... Uh, Susanna from Sweden, Joe wow. from Ohio, Gerald from Denver, um, and then we've got some more close to home for us today. We've got Steve Newman from sunny Bedford, um, and we've got Trish uh, from sunny North Wales. So yes, Wonderful. they are they are flying in as as we can see. I mean, honestly, it's so great that you've joined us and we really do appreciate it. We hope that you enjoy the show. Um, so, Claire, what are we here to talk about? Tell us. Well, Claire, this morning <laughs> um, at 7 a.m., we launched a couple of brand new products. We did. So what have you got there for us? I've got two new products. I mean... Okay. So um, I'm going to quickly talk about the uh, Olympus Pen EP7. Uh, it's an absolute gorgeous camera. If you ever use the Pen F or the EPL, it's almost like a sort of a hybrid of the two. It's actually got the colour and monochrome button on the front, which I absolutely love. I've been shooting with it all week. It's a cracker to pop in your bag and it's just got loads of new buttons. It's got two dials. It's got loads of it's USB charging, blah, blah, blah. So uh, check this out. If that's the sort of camera that you like, um, it's absolutely amazing. And we have launched that today. But we're not really here to talk about that product today. Um, we are actually here to talk about this baby. Um, it is our brand new uh, 8 to 25 f4 wide angle lens uh, to sit within alongside all of our other pro lenses. So we've added one to the lineup and it is a cracker. Um, I absolutely love it. I literally got to shoot with it for one night. It's so sharp and so fast and the reach is amazing um, because, you know, you're looking at a sort of wide angle at the eight end, um, but you're looking at sort of 25 or 50 mil in, in 35 mil sensor terms at the other end. Um, and it's just a great, great lens. Um, obviously, lots of features and things that we can talk about as we go along. But what I would say is if you've got any questions about the lens, um, then please put them in the comments and we will go over them. Um, as always, you know, we have, uh, we've got some people that can talk about it. I can talk about it. Um, but just let us know what you want to know about the lens. As I said, it's pretty awesome, isn't it, Claire? Absolutely. And we have uh, two special guests joining us today. Um, we have Moises joining us from Spain and Justin from uh, the United States. So we're going to bring them on very shortly to, uh, to talk about the lens and to show off some of the beautiful images they've been shooting. Um, let's just have a, another quick look. I saw uh, Chris has already pre-ordered her lens, so she was on it this morning. Um, well and done. we have a lot of questions flying in. Um, a quick one on the price of the lens. Um, so eight nine yeah, nine pounds, um, ten nine nine dollars, and nine 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 euros. And you can go ahead and pre-order that lens now. Yes, exactly. Um, it is an absolute uh, gorgeous lens. I mean, 
what do you need to know about it? We can tell you everything. Um, I cannot so... wait to get my hands on it, Claire. You send it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean that really. I don't mean that really. Um, as I said, uh, any questions that you've got, but also say hello to us in the comments. We obviously we've got a big audience tonight, so we may not be able to get through all the hellos. But let me tell you, as I scroll through, uh, the little curse of getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah. Normally it's quite big, <laughs> so you can see the comments and it's much, much smaller. So uh, there are lots of uh, new people that I've not seen before, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and someone said, I like those uh, t-shirts yeah Olympus t-shirts which you you know you can get the merch is out there um, okay so Claire mm. shall we introduce our first guest yes let's do it Claire so uh, you may not uh, you may not be aware of this lovely photographer uh, his name is Moises Dugat and he hails from Spain uh, he's done some work with us in the past and did some blogs for Olympus Passion uh, magazine an absolutely amazing uh, photographer and you are going to love him he's absolutely brilliant so let's bring him now Moises hello <laughs> hey hello I was hello. not expecting this introduction <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing it's uh, so amazing the thing. It just, it's this guy is amazing thank you oh it's so it's easy so... for it's easy for everybody to shoot with this <laughs> So wonderful of you to join us tonight on our Coffee with the Clares and we appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us and talk to our viewers about the lens. Um, so yes, did you enjoy uh, using the lens? You've had fun with it? Wow, I, I feel myself very lucky for it. I, I mean, when I said, when, when somebody at Olympus said uh, that I was going to receive one just for two weeks, I said, no, just two weeks, no, please, I need more time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then, then but uh, it's only two weeks uh, and I just love it. I love it uh, because at the end, uh, I was very curious and I think this lens is really, uh, it's really amazing because it's very special because you, you have been talking about the reach of the lens having from the from 16 millimeters to 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 50 from 8 to 25 uh, for us landscape photographers is giving a lot of advantages uh, when we are composing and we are shooting this sky we are shooting this sky that it's small and you don't have anything at the top then you want to focus in what it's interesting then in the sunsets and sunrises, then uh, you don't have to change it. I mean, you just walk back, you walk back a little bit and zoom it uh, and you have the same subject, but you crop this boring part of the sky, then this is absolutely fantastic. And there is no other lens that can do that. Okay, yeah. then only for this is wonderful. And it has a lot of more advantages. I don't know if you, have, yeah. if you want me to talk like so much. You know, don't worry. We will stop you if we feel we need to move on. So don't worry. I, I'm always good. I'm good at stopping you. I mean, I love. I love your passion uh, for this for this for this lens. It's so gorgeous, isn't it? I tell you what, we're going to do. We're going to go straight in to now don't forget as i said if you've got any questions for moises uh put them in the comments and we can go to them uh, it's always good to see what you're what you're thinking and if you would need to know anything about the lens obviously moises has used it in the field um but now we're going to show uh a few of moises images so have a look at these they are stunning gav there you go oh wow, wow. look at that yeah the, the, this one is a is a fantastic place. I mean, it, I mean, you can shoot this place in any angle, and it's always a big photo because it's really, really, really great. Um, in this case, I was trying to frame the building with the tree and and get this leading line of the starting by the corner. Then uh, I shoot this one. This one is just six seconds, six seconds exposure uh, f f8 or f9 something like that and and the 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 lens makes it easy because it doesn't have a flare uh, you can shoot directly to the to the to the light to the sun then uh, which is really wonderful and you have all this zoom range that you can you can manage it really really well 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one thing uh, with the new technology, we've added things like fluorine coating to the lens. Um, and it means that the flare has been massively reduced. Obviously, if you're a landscape shooter, massively. Um, you know, if you are um, an outdoor lover, then obviously you are going to, uh, you know, appreciate less flare when you're shooting. Um, yeah. And this is ideal for that subject. So and where is this shot, Moise? Is this is shot in Spain? <laughs> Yeah, we were in lockdown at that moment. Then I can only, uh, I'm from Catalonia, then I can only travel inside Catalonia. I cannot exit Catalonia. Then uh, this one, this is this is one place called Puchagut. And yeah, this is in Spain. All my, all the photos with the 825, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, because I was planning to go uh, further, actually, uh, I got the lens when the volcano in, in Iceland erupted. Then I tried to get a ticket because I said, okay, I go to Iceland and I will ask Olympus to send me the lens to the hotel, okay, because I will be in quarantine there. When I will get the lens, I will shoot amazing photos in Iceland. I will do like... <laughs> <laughs> because then it's so easy, you know? And, and at the end, uh, I could not get a ticket. Everybody was decided to go to the volcano in Iceland where more people at that moment than in all the rest of Europe, believe me, yeah. no ticket. <laughs> but I think it's but, also nice to, to get some of these shots, you know, local to where you are. And I know Claire and I have been shooting a lot more locally rather than traveling. And it's just, you know, the, the more you shoot different locations that you're used to, maybe with a new lens makes you think a bit differently about it. And makes you a better photographer because, mm -hmm. again, going to Iceland is like doing like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then this way you have to you have to 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 plan to think to yeah. go and to try to find the good angles mm -hmm. and and this is one of the advantages you don't need the tripod you can just do different things and find yeah. the best position and 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 after that if you need to do a long exposure you can go but uh these these guys making everything so easy yeah. you know it's making your life easier as a photographer and you've got lots of love from this photo, as you can see, uh, popping up the comments here. Beautiful photo. Thank you, Samuel. Hey, Tom. Why is this great shot? Tom, I'm a super fan of you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked, man. Yeah. So we got a few questions coming in. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, we are trying desperately. Those are, there's quite a few questions coming in, so hopefully I haven't missed a few. Um, but yes, uh, the filter thread um, yeah. is uh, 72 uh, millimeters. Uh, you do get a filter hood in the box. Um, the joy about this lens is you can attach filters directly to it. Um, some people are saying uh, the difference in weight between the 7 to 14, it's, it's a bit lighter. It's about 90 grams lighter. Um, you know, the 7 to 14 has the 2.8, which is brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. And this sits alongside it. It's not a replacement. It's absolutely sitting alongside those. Um, and yeah, I think there's a few questions out there. Some people are saying uh, Dave Watson Kamak has said, wow. is is the new lens weather sealed like the other pro lenses yes 100 percent is ipx1 tested dave good question uh with all the lineup it's absolutely uh on that top par so yes uh do you want to pick out a couple of questions claire yes uh let's have a look um janet is asking what is the angle of view at eight mil Oh, that's interesting. I do have a spreadsheet here and we will put that up in the comments. More or less? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, it's 107. Yeah. 107. It's yeah. 107. Yes, it is. And um, Hope on. is asking, um, Moises, which camera are you using for these shots with your 8-25? I, uh, this camera that is recording is the uh, EM1 Mark II, but for these shots, I'm using the EM1 Mark III because the amazing and awesome Life ND feature that all of you, if you have it, should start using extensively because it's a big difference between this yeah. one and any other camera in the market. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, look. let's have a look. Oh, look at that. This is your I second image. I love this image. I mean, that this is, is like... It's like a fantasy. It's just the most incredible. You can't believe this is a real place. This looks like something made up. You know, when I saw this image originally, I was like, I love this image and I would so love to go there. Um, talk us through it, Moises. Tell us about this image. 
Yeah, this this place is is a little bit what you say. It's really, I mean, you reach there and it's it it's like it is. It's like it is in the photo. I mean, it's really magical. I mean, you 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 wait to see an elf like with the with the arrow and and the and the bow is just there, and you say, oh, you know. But in this case, no elf attacked me, and I could take the photos. And in this one, I was literally literally hanging of a tree okay then i want to get a little bit high and there is a, a a kind of trees and a wall there it's a it's a and i went up and i was between branches and like this and handheld i handheld like six or seven seconds in this one and wow. it works really well you can have a lot a lot of different angles you can use uh, these these uh, i have also some photos of specifically the waterfall and i mean it's a it's a fantastic place it's all, it's very close to the, the 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 photo that I took before, just a few kilometers from there. And Fantastic. you have to walk a little bit to reach here because uh, so many people were accessing the place that they had to put a, a fence. So if you want to go here, you have to walk a little bit and pay a fee, a small fee on weekends. Okay. But it deserves, eh? it's amazing. Yeah, yeah definitely. Ah, Michael says, this is my favorite image. Yes, me too, Michael. I love that image. It's, so cool. it's amazing. Um, so just a couple of more questions. Um, Graham says, would we need a very thin filter? Yes, you'd need less than four mil or less, which is, you know, pretty standard now on most wide angle lenses uh, that are digital. You buy a top end pro filter that's four millimeters and less um, because obviously you don't want a vignette. Um, that's quite important. I, I were using... So, sorry, Claire. I was using uh, a threaded filter here, uh, ah. and the, yeah, I was using I was using a polarizer, okay? Yeah, okay, just because the the reflection of the water there. Then I wanted to to eliminate the reflection a little bit, and and I use the polarizer most of almost all the time. I just leave it threaded because uh, it, it's really good, specifically when you are shooting this, and it works very well. No big net. Uh, it works. You can you. I mean. It's not only threaded, it's threaded and useful. Okay, then I can tell this. And we have a question, uh, two questions about the manual focus clutch. So Mayland and uh, Giles and YouTube has said, does it come with a manual focus clutch? It does. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And it also yes. has, has a lens function button. <clears throat> so you can program any of our features to the lens function button um, and the other joy uh, it's got a slightly uh, thicker uh, focus rim uh, so when you uh, focus ring so we can feel it a little bit more and that I really like that um, and the other thing is of course when you are in the uh, closed position you actually got a tiny little locking mechanism now you would have seen that on the 9 to 18 but it was a physical switch uh, with this one uh, you've got a literally you can hear it locking in uh, there's no force needed to unlock it but you've just got that gorgeous satisfaction of it locking back into place uh when you're on uh the super you know when you sort of finished and when you're zoomed out and i absolutely love that it really feels good in that respect absolutely and we've got a couple more questions um does it have ibs plus lens stabilization similar to the 12 to 100 f4 no, no, it doesn't have built in image stabilization. Um, so it doesn't have lens uh, sync or sync IS as you're used to with the 300 and the 12 100. Um, no, it doesn't. But, you know, you don't need it when you are, have fantastic five axis image stabilization that we have exactly. in our bodies. Exactly. OK, let's go over to the next image, shall we? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, look at that. Now that's a beautiful mm. wide angle shot. Yeah, I love that. This this is in the very north of Spain, uh, in the very north of Catalonia. It's almost touching France. If if you if you just wander a bit and just get distracted, you will be in France. Okay, then you walk a little bit and you say, "Oh my God, I'm in France!" You know. Then uh, <laughs> it's it's very very at the north, and I think it's one of the most beautiful little beaches rocky beaches that you can find in uh, that i ever seen because if you go up i have a drone i check this one with the drone and it's like a circle a perfect circle uh with this small entry that you can see there and after that it has this rock i mean it looks that it has been artificially created to take this kind of photo 
you know, in where I was there shooting myself, uh, taking a selfie. And uh, I was super scared because the camera was really, really in the edge. Uh, my tripod is very stable then. Uh, but when you see, I mean, it's, it, it, I mean, it's a, it's a cliff. Okay. Then it was in the edge of the cliff. Then, uh, and that's yeah, you, this is, this it? is me. This is me. Yeah. <laughs> this is my, the, the, uh, if you check my right hand, I have the, I have the, I am shooting here. You can, can with you the see that? Are you shooting yeah. with the app? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because obviously I was I tried to be alone all the time, okay? Because obviously the, for the obvious reasons, and and yeah, I have I have to repeat this. I, I was really looking for this shot, okay? Because I was there. I knew that I wanted to go to this place, um, and the first day that I arrived, it was totally calm. the The sky was totally blue. I mean, no shape in the in the in the waves and. It was really boring. Then I had to go back three days until I could get this photo. I, I fought for this photo a lot, okay? And finally I got it, then. Yeah, I mean, and those shots that you go back for two or three times, you could, because you know that you're gonna get something spectacular, they tend to be the better ones because the first one you're like, yeah, it wasn't quite what I wanted or the light wasn't right. Then you go back a second time and when you keep going back, you finally nail the shot that you want. It's a real a relief, but it's also such joy, isn't it? Yeah, and it's so satisfactory. I mean, I always think that one of the best parts of being a landscape photographer is to go out and come back without any photo, okay? Because uh, it's making you to have this happiness and this rush when you go to one place like this and shoot the photo, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you go out and you shoot amazing photos every day, then it, it absolutely, it's like, what's the point, you know? It's okay, maybe it will be fantastic. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm pessimistic or I don't know. But uh, for me, uh, <laughs> I, I love so much to go back home with amazing photo. And I know that I love it because so many times I go just with average ones, you know. This place is fantastic. I drove a lot. This place is very far away from where I'm living, but I drove di directly there because I wanted this photo for this event and I knew that it would be wonderful. Yeah, it's oh, absolutely that. beautiful and you're getting lots and lots of love for it. Everyone says it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. Um, and did you use uh, Live ND here or were you a longer shutter speed? I always use Live ND. Always. Fantastic. I mean, eighty-five percent of my photos are with Life and D. Even if there is nothing moving, guys, uh, people who is watching, uh, don't think Life and D like a filter. Like when you put a physical filter in front of the lens, okay? Then remember, uh, you are stacking photos when you are doing when you are using Life and D. Then if you can shoot half a second, which is the minimum time that you can use the Life and D, then you will get like two more steps of uh, dynamic range, you will get better colors, you are, you will get a raw that you will not believe that you have it. I mean, it's th this, this camera, it's, it's a monster. There is no, I mean, okay, uh, it's fantastic. Okay, uh, I don't want to get excited. Because, <laughs> but, no, it's good. Okay, it's everybody good. try it. Okay, try it at home. You, it is you, incredible. Uh, you know, yeah. don't try this at home. Then in this case, it's the opposite. Try it at <laughs> home. Try to try to do the same shot uh, with life and D and without life and D. Don't worry about if there is not a waterfall to use a uh, 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 life and D. In this case, okay, it was the, the the foam of the of the waves and so on. Then you can say, okay, he used the a uh, little bit longer exposure to get. But forget about long exposure. Just try to use Life ND when you can. Uh, you can slow the, the shutter speed until half a second. Then you will get so many benefits that you will get shock, and you will use always Life ND. Actually, in the in the button in in this button, I have the Life ND program. Then so I, you know that you can put the Life ND here. Mm -hmm. Then you, I press this one. I got life and D. I press this one. I take life and D off, and it's really, really practical. And since I'm using extensively, it's very practical for me. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Tito is asking, how far were you from the camera for that shot? I don't know. I can uh, yeah, uh, maybe. I, look at the look at the photo again. 
Uh, all the I mean, you've got to be, the, you've got to be rock, 20 metres, haven't you? You've at least, be at least, yeah. At least 20 yes. metres. Yes, at least. Okay, it, it's, it was all the length that this rock and maybe five or six more metres. Yeah. I mean, I've just got to quickly read a, a, a comment from Tom Ormerod, who is our landscape ambassador. He said he went very near there four years ago, but didn't actually <laughs> go there, which made me laugh because now, Tom, guess what? You've got to get out there now. You've now got to go there these, now, Tom. You're gonna, He's got like a bit of envy there, which I think is brilliant. So uh, well done from Tom for that. Tom, Tom, get in touch if you go closer <laughs> to any of these places that we will meet and we will shoot together. It will be fantastic for me. I'm a, uh, I'm a <laughs> I'm an absolute fan of them. Yeah. Uh, and you're getting a lot Fantastic. of love and a lot of people have been checking out your Instagram. Yeah. So uh, you're getting a lot of love of, from that as well. Um, so and uh, yes, so let's go to the next image. <gasps> I love this. I mean, this if you've ever, brilliant. I just think this is incredible. If you've ever thought about going on a caravanning holiday. <laughs> this, uh, is, <laughs> this is it. Is this your this caravan holiday? <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like, you know, you go to those beautiful cabanas and it's in the middle of the ocean. Uh, this is just stunning. Where is this and where is this shot, Moises? I mean, does somebody and how did there? you get? How did you get the no, caravan? No, no, no. But... Yeah, yeah. This, this is just by my house, OK? Then I drive 15 minutes. No, the love! It's is it really? 15 minutes? Wow. Yeah, I drive 15 minutes from here, 15 minutes. I, it's, it's just there. Then I have wow. to walk... Uh, a lot inside the water my tripod lives inside the water okay yeah. then uh and and this thing this thing is a is a it, it was an old farm for seafood okay actually, right. actually they okay. were it, it they, they were they, they are cultivating mussels uh in, ah. in this thing you know okay. then they put these ropes uh, with something on there, then the the muscles are. Then after that, they collect the ropes and and this is an old one. They they are not doing this anymore. Then this is something that they bring here just to put things inside. Okay. Then right now is abandoned. Okay. Then uh, because the what the water here is is uh, the, the the deep is not enough now. Then they went uh, like that way. Okay. And they created new ones. Okay. But for as a, this is like a photographer's paradise, okay? But it's not easy to shoot here because first of all, you have to walk a lot inside the water. Uh, the water is more or less uh, above the knees and under your hips uh, oh, okay. in this place, yeah. And and if you get a dramatic day like this one, it was it rained a little bit this day. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Then also. We went here so many times. Then the the other day we we shoot uh, um, uh, we managed to shoot a uh, uh, Milky Way uh, in with one of my friends standing on top of there. You can you can see it in my Facebook uh, and I am sorry in my in my Instagram. And it's a, it's really really a, a really beautiful and nice place. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's and it is so unusual. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously we get to see lots of um landscape photography, you know, where there would be something that's been there for many years. But this is I love this image because it's so unique, you know. Um uh and I love the fact that we now know the story behind it. And yeah, I think this is just such a cracking image. Uh it it's it's just so unique and I, I absolutely love it. When I saw it, I laughed and then I was like, Wow, this is I would would love to take a picture i would love yeah. to be there taking a picture of this one and again ben, you're, you're invited getting... claire yay <laughs> when you uh, any of you you when you come i will just put you there and and we will shoot together uh, I will you hold know you what to is that. what is usual to have here what is what is good to have here and you will say okay i never heard about this before maybe or yes there are some things that you can buy in these very cheap places that are kind of a resistance that you can heat the lens okay so the humidity is not uh, blurring the, the, the main lens. Uh, I didn't need it with the A25. Oh, interesting. Because That's the, good. Fl the, the, we, floor, the fluoride coating. Yeah. And okay. I think this is something that the, basically what the fluorine coating does is it repels any uh, any liquid from the front of the glass. So, you know, mm -hmm. there it's it's a, 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 um, a 
uh, technology that's being used in things like car windscreens. Uh, when the water hits, it just basically repels off and it's so much easier to just give your lens a wipe, you know, um, if you've got it a little bit damp. But I think that this is the joy with moving forward and, and the new technologies that um, the, the new products that are coming are having and the flooring coating is one of them. Um, it just sort of goes to show that, you know, R&D are still working, uh, making all those new technologies and bringing them to you. So so, uh, yeah, check that out. The flooring coating is pretty amazing. I have been one day here and I didn't come with any photo because all of them were blurred because of the, the, the humidity it was in my in my lens. Uh, but with the 825, it didn't happen. I, I, I actually, uh, as I said, I bought this one that you put up, you plug a power, a power bank mm -hmm. in and it's hitting the lens. So uh, you avoid this. But with the eight, this day, everything was okay. I mean, yeah. I didn't need it then. It was really fantastic. This place is amazing. Good stuff. We've got a couple of questions. Craig says, what's the minimum focusing distance? Well, it's 0 0.23. It's 23 centimetres or nine inches, depending on how you want it, or 0 0.23, uh, depending on <laughs> where you're from in the world. But we would say uh, 23 centimetres. And that is across yeah. all focal lengths. Um, I took some pictures of my dog running towards me and literally she was full frame, just eyes and nose and absolutely pin sharp. So, um, yes, that's that's the question answered there um we got a few yep oh great so uh wonderful they've answered that you've got so much love uh they've asked have you done video with this lens did you do any sh video shooting with this lens uh, actually i didn't have time because i yeah. had only two weeks and i was so focused in getting uh yeah i mean i'm very selective with the images i take you know and and for me it was like uh, getting up soon, get the fo the photos yeah. in the in the morning. Uh, no sky today, shit. I have nothing. Then tomorrow I yeah. will have to come back and like this. And and actually, I I'm not used to take video, but um, what I will say is uh, they, I mean they have they have this ability of having from eight to twenty five that I think it have to be very useful for video and the they have almost no distortion okay yeah. then even yeah. if you are using for blogging or things like this with the camera like close to you then it's okay the shape of your face is is obvious okay it's a yeah. super wide angle then you will have the distortion of the wide angle that i want uh because but uh you have the the manual clutch and you have the ivs in the camera then i, I think it should be absolutely great like the 714 yeah it's yeah. more or less the same in this case okay good yeah. stuff right okay let's move along because we are just a few minutes over that's fine we are just a few minutes over um Obviously, we are going to, you know, you're going to stay with us. We're going to pop you in the background for a little while in a minute, in a minute. Um, <laughs> and uh, while we get our other guest on and then at the end, we'd like you to, to both come back on. But for now, uh, thank you so much. Those images are incredible. Um, we know that you've certainly picked up a few followers around the world. If you didn't uh, have, uh, if you haven't seen Moise's work and you love his Instagram feed, obviously follow him because the, the stuff is amazing. Thank you so much for explaining and showing us your images and for talking about the lens. And we will get you back in about 20 minutes You're welcome. or so. Speak to you in a minute. Moses. Claire, over to you. Oh, they were some fantastic images, weren't they? And if you have got any more questions for Moises, then do drop them in the comments and we will come back to them at the end. Um, but now we're going to bring on our next guest. So uh, he is an Olympus explorer. He's a photographer and a videographer. And he has taken those stunning images that Gavin was showing earlier of lens. Uh, they're all shot by him. Uh, so I would like to introduce <laughs> Justin from Montana. Yay! Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Hi Justin. Hey. Justin, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us all the way. I know it's, it's not too early in the morning there, is it? No, it's almost noon here, so we're doing good. We're doing great. Ah, I'm finally that's... awake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we did a few sort of setups and I was like, oh my gosh, it's 7 a.m. there. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, apologies for that. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We are so pleased to have a guest from across the pond. Uh, obviously, uh, your Instagram is amazing. I'm following you.
you now Thank and you. it's just been so good to start sort of seeing everybody globally and seeing our photographers globally and yeah. being able to introduce you to uh, a worldwide audience even more than before so and it's always good for you know the guys in the UK and Europe to see you and to have a chat with you um, so welcome yeah and your I mean your product shots just an art utterly incredible they are the Thank most you. beautiful product shots i've ever seen whenever we do a launch i'm like yes i want justin's product shot because they're just insane yeah. thank you yep yep i feel very lucky i've had the i've been able to have the lens for a while so like to, to, shoot, to shoot the product and then to also use it so uh gotta take it to some very very lucky or very beautiful spots so I feel very lucky yeah exactly what a great excuse to get out and uh find somewhere new to shoot or maybe reshoot what you've been shooting before uh, with a different product. It always gives you that little bit of a buzz, doesn't it? When yeah. you've got something new to try out, you're like, yeah, you know, you get quite stoked for it. And I love that. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Especially with this, with, with, uh, with a little bit of extra reach and length, it, uh, you, can, you can be a lot more selective and creative while you're doing stuff. So it's, it's nice. Wonderful. Okay. Why don't we, uh, let's go over to your first image. Um, I love this. Tell us where it's shot and talk us through it. So this is, uh, this is in Montana, um, up, uh, up in the mountain. So it's, what's kind of crazy right now is that it's everything. I mean, it's rainy today, but everything down in the Valley is super green and summer's here. Uh, but if you get up into the Alpine and the mountains, there's still six feet of snow up there, uh, wow. which is kind of crazy. So, uh, wanted to kind of go up for a mountain summit to see uh, what we could find. Got up, we woke up at 2 a.m. To, to go up and climb and, and then got up for sunrise. Uh, but yeah, it was super beautiful up there. Everything's still covered. And it's kind of fun to be able to test the wide and the, and the tight ends of the spectrum with the lens up there. Yeah, I love it. And of course, it's, uh, it's snowing there. So I'm assuming that the weather ceiling came in pretty handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the detail, is, the detail is fantastic. And the, the sharpness is great. Um, and what ISO were you shooting at here? What was the... Uh, so I think, um, I think this was around 600 stopped down a little bit um, with kind of a slow shutter speed. Um, but with IBIS, it was totally fine. So um, Fantastic. Kind of rely on tend to tend to rely on that quite a bit. And are you tripoding uh, with this one, or is this handheld? Uh, all handheld. Um, kind of trying to like move light and fast in the mountains, so yeah, not yeah. carry too much weight with me, which is great for this lens. Yeah, and this is the whole point about the Olympus uh, system, isn't it? That if you are backpacking or, like you said, hiking, I mean, this is yeah. not a, this is pretty serious climb in my in my book. Um, I don't want to be taking <laughs> a tripod with me, right? I want to take minimal kit. I want to be, like you say, light and fast and yeah. mobile and agile. And obviously, uh, the five-axis image stabilization absolutely helps with that. You know, it makes it, doesn't it? Yep. And kind of like Moses was saying was, is like live and D comes in clutch a lot too, is especially like, uh, scenes with less light or something. If you do want more stops of exposure, uh, to be able to work with in post, uh, that's really beneficial to have. And, and you can shoot that, uh, handheld as well. If you're, if you're careful about it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It's fantastic. So should we have a quick look or a long look at the next uh, image? Sure. Oh, see now this is just that is such a it cool just makes shot. it makes you want to be there, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the similar shot where Moises was standing on the rock in the sea. Yeah. This type of image makes me want to go out and shoot. It makes yeah, me want to be definitely. part of part of the landscape. It makes me want to be out there. And again, talk us through it. Yep. So uh, this is a, a very similar spot. So the last image I took uh, was kind of down uh, on the, the the far ridge. You can see there. Uh, this one's up as we're get, approaching summit, getting closer, kind of following uh, following the, the trail and the tracks there, which is kind of a, a cool leading line. And what you can see is like, we're rocking right on the edge of the spine. So the snow is super hard and icy that morning. So we were able to stay on top, uh, which was great. Um, just trying to be kind of mindful of, of the cornices that you can kind of see like the, the spiky yeah. ridge right behind the subject there. Um, just so those don't break off or anything, but uh, yeah, it was it was a gorgeous morning with just enough clouds to kind of light the sky up and uh, give us some some pretty colors to work with. And how high are you above sea level here? 
Do you know? Uh, this is probably 5,500, 6,000 feet. Uh, wow. what would okay. it, what would wow. I, what would the equivalent be? So, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, <laughs> Off that's, the top that's, of my head. That's pretty good. With <laughs> yeah. I'm old. I, st I still work in feet, so that's absolutely <laughs> fine. Uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah, so, I mean, our European friends, maybe they'll be like, what's it in metres? But for yeah, me, maybe, I'm, they, I'm, maybe someone can tell us in metres. <laughs> <laughs> Doing yeah, everything send, us, send us some comments. We need Yeah, uh, exactly. Need, yeah. Know, I'm curious. <laughs> uh, but for me, it's all about the feet, not the metres. But, um, yeah, it just uh, when it's that high, you, like you say, it's a long trek up, right? It's yeah. Uh, yeah. lovely. And the detail Kinda, is Lenses Here's a off. kind of funny testament too. I'll give you scroll up here. Uh, the he's actually what's in his hand. He's carrying an onion. He uh, he lost a dare to eat an onion at the top. So <laughs> <laughs> he had a, he had to bite into an onion and was crying at the summit. <laughs> And I'm assuming you shot all that on video. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, like this that. I like that twist is, to yeah. the story. I like, is this before the onion eating or after the onion this eating? This is before, yeah. This is while you're still happy. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'm going to be your model. Thankfully, you took the shot before because I think he probably would have said no yeah. afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I've we've ruined got my the, luck with him. We've got the meters. Uh, yeah, Tim well has done, told Tim. us the meters. Thanks, Tim. It's about 1,700 <laughs> ah, to 2,000 meters. Yeah, it's, thanks, um, Tim. And we've got a, a question uh, from YouTube. Do you apply lens distortion correction when shooting with the 8mm? Uh, I haven't well, actually mil. used that. I'm, I'm trying to think. It might add it automatically in the software i've never done it yeah it does I, th I think probably yes maybe i really so i've filmed with the lens as well and filming uh i never apply any distortion correction or anything so it's nothing that would be noticeable or uh that i'd really go out of my way to change photo softwares may do it uh just automatically and uh but yeah looking through the camera you don't lines stay straight and everything looks good and how did you find the lens for filming? We had a question for Moises earlier about filming with the lens and he hadn't shot any video yet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's becoming my new favorite. So if I, it's like probably the first lens I grab other than a prime or something fast if light's low, uh, just because it's so wide and tight. So you can pretty much, and it, and it has such a close focus distance. So you can kind of get really close shots. You can get those mediums, you can get tights even. Um, and and wide so it's kind of a great all around one one all in one lens uh mm. to capture a lot of things mm. and I, I agree i mean when i put it on the body and had it at eight mil i'm like yeah i'm sort of used to seeing that focal length and then when i zoomed in to 25 i was like whoa you know yeah. because <laughs> yeah <laughs> you just sort of don't expect it in that respect you know you're mm. just sort of like you know thinking oh yeah okay this is a wide and then it's like oh my gosh you know you forget how 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 long 25 mil is actually yes. it doesn't sound yeah. long but it's uh the human eye sees it about 40 49 degrees so if you double up the 25 to a 35 mil sensor it's about what the human eye sees so you can also use this for street photography you know you can use this for uh just a normal this could be the sort of standard lens that sits on your camera so yeah. it's quite yeah. a versatile lens in that respect isn't it yeah and super yeah. multifunctional yeah and, exactly. and something i guess that's in, that that i really like too is so like uh, when the kind of like you mentioned, it, it locks down and then it comes out to actually use. Um, but when it, it does compact really tight or really small, so it fits in a backpack really well, um, doesn't take up too much size. Um, so I can actually carry other things, potentially other lenses into the mountains uh, or gear or food, whatever I need on that a mission or adventure, um, which is really helpful as well. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, let's take another look. Let's take a look at your next uh, image. Wow, oh, look that's at that gorgeous. Flare. Love a bit of flair. Love it. Let's talk Absolutely us through it. this one. Uh, all right, so this uh, this is actually a giant island uh, in Montana as well. Um, if you kind of zoom in, you can see a person for, for scale way down, uh, kind of silhouetted against the water there as well, oh, yeah. um, wow. which is cool. Um, but ca uh, yeah, canoed, canoed across really early in the morning and then hiked up to the top for sunrise wow. um, to kind of wait for it to come up and pop. And then uh, to get the sun star, like the, the kind of flare with, uh, with the rays coming out of it, I just stopped the lens down quite a bit, I think, uh, to F11, maybe a little more um, to really kind of emphasize that as it kind of rose over the trees there. And there's a couple... Uh, I shot this as this was a really great scene because this is at the wide end of the spectrum. 
zoomed in, you could get, you could really focus on the person and just kind of like, if you were to zoom this image in and just crop a square around that person, that's what it looked like with the mountains a little bit bigger with, uh, with some comp compression as well. So the 50 or the 25 mil 50 equivalent there at the end of that spectrum was really nice for this scene as well. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible just how well that lens handles the flare and shooting directly into the sun. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's nice because the flare doesn't really bleed across the image, yeah. kind of like uh, like other lenses do, and mm. it just really really accentuates that the sun star there. Yeah. And, what, and was the and was the sort of flare the, or the reduction of flare something that you really noticed with this lens? Yeah, yeah, I really liked it. It's kind of. Uh, because some, sometimes with some lenses, you, you got to be kind of careful with the angle that you hold it out so it doesn't bleed across. Uh, but with this, you could you had a lot more flexibility and could, could actually compose the image the way you wanted um, and kind of put the, the star uh, where you wanted within the image and, and get what you were looking for. So I just want to say, uh, Sean Robert Ramuna says, ha ha, that's the guy who ate the onion, isn't it? Is that the same guy? <laughs> you made him walk all the way down there? <laughs> made him wake up early and canoe over there to eat the onion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he must be a good friend, right? Because, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, they're not, not many yeah. people would do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start filling my backpack with onions and just yeah. get them out of the street. Yeah, literally. I think this should be like a forever project. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, big shout out to the guy with the onion. That's what I yeah, say. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> onion man. Yeah, we should give him a we should give him a shout out. I think only fair. Uh, yeah, so definitely. okay, let's. Uh, have we got questions? Let's have a look. Um, obviously, people are saying it's going to be good for astrophotography. Obviously, yeah. I know that you would usually go uh, bright. You know, sort of the one point twos or the two point eights. But this is still going to be good for astro. Uh, F four is still okay. You know, uh, don't get me wrong. There's 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 definitely as I said, if you're doing the night photography, I don't see why you wouldn't use this for astro. Uh, um, it's it's still in that in that sort of bracket, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's have a quick look. Um, Claire, do you want to? Uh, so we've got a couple of comments. We've got. Um, I think this lens will be a great addition to my twelve to one hundred. Uh, that's from Sean and uh, Claire Williams says uh, it sounds like a really practical lens. Um, and we've had a question. Have you tried to use the lens with gloves in yeah. the cold? Yeah. So uh, on those very first couple images, the snowy ones, uh, I I wore I did wear gloves and I did not wear gloves. Uh, worked really great. The like we've mentioned earlier, the focus ring is a little bit bigger, um, and so that's really nice for for using gloves. And if you're filming with gloves on um, and put it in manual focus mode, it kind of gives you a little more to grip onto as well. Uh, which is beneficial. Fantastic. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Tom Ormer says, great for star trails. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, um, I can't bet Tom cannot wait to get his hands on it, can yeah. you, Tom? <laughs> 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 okay, uh, we've got one more we've image. We've got one we? image left, I think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Nice. This, that, this looks like a climb away. This looks like a climb, Justin. It's definitely some hiking there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because so right now it's harder to get to, but it is it's relatively easy to act to uh, to access here in one of the national parks. Um, I really wanted to use this to, to kind of play with and experiment uh, with being able to put filters on the on the front of the lens. So using a, a neutral density to kind of slow things down and uh, really slow that water. This is yeah. actually zoomed in. Um, I don't, I'm guessing the focal length is probably around 17 millimeters, maybe closer to 20 to kind of, to kind of punch in and emphasize the log kind of running across there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, just playing with, uh, being able to put different types of filters, whether it's a, a, a V and D for video or a CPL or something is a really nice feature to have in a, in a lens with, with this much range. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and these are all shot on the EM1 Mark III, can I assume, or are they yep. shot with EM1X or? Um... Uh, all, e uh, a couple uh, M1X, but yeah, EM1 III for most of them. Yeah, and I'm assuming again, when you're off hiking, the EM1 Mark III is the one to carry, right? The smaller, yep. lighter one, you know? Yep, exactly. 
and I absolutely love that. Um, so let's have a look. You got some lots of love for your images right the way through. Um, people saying absolutely, Sean Roberts saying absolutely beautiful image. Uh, I mean, Sarah Mason says, I can't believe that shot at F9. Yes, totally is, Sarah, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, and people want to yeah, see I Onion mean, Man walk the, uh, walk yeah. the log there and eat the onion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need we we we, we yeah, I think you're gonna need to like uh, show him on your Instagram. Yeah, I feature. think he's gonna have to make a feature. I need a series yeah, exactly. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go post. A, I'll go post. Let me see if I can find a clip. I'll post it on my Instagram of him eating the onion at the summit there. <laughs> Oh, I want to see that. I totally want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, thank you, Cornish Blue Videos. We are so <laughs> excited. Uh, that's going to be something that goes up. It's a thing. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, you enjoyed using the lens, and is this the one that's sort of permanently attached to your camera now? I mean, you know, yeah. it's one of those. I mean, I know that when I get a new product, obviously, they tend to things like the 150 to 400 I had it and then it went away and then I had it again so I didn't have it you know for a long term but this one I'm going to be using all the time I, I know I've only touched the surface with the few the little couple of hours that I had with the previous one so yeah I'm uh this is going to be your sort of go-to from now on Justin yep yeah so 12 the 12 to 40 2.8 was kind of what lived on my camera for a while but now that I've had access to this one for so long this one just lives on my body and it's kind of whether I'm, whether I'm biking, hiking, uh, canoeing, doing whatever it's, it seems to be the perfect range for me. And then if I do want something tighter, uh, I'll reach for more of like a telephoto specific lens, uh, yeah. almost. So this, this does a great job covering kind of the wide to the medium range that, that I like to shoot personally, like while I'm out moving. Wonderful. Okay, so why don't we get Moises back in for the yeah. last sort of 10 minutes? And thank you for those images, Justin. They were incredible. Honestly, thank you, I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's so, apart from the fact it's really exciting to actually meet you and talk to you, uh, the fact that our global company is becoming so much more sort of interactive and we're starting to all know each other, uh, we really love that. And the fact that we can, you know, share, uh, share the show with your audiences, but share you with our audience i think that is amazing so yeah, definitely okay there he is hello hi, Moises. hi mark hi mark hello hey, hey I, I, I saw i saw a question there asking for the for the sharpness of the lens in the corner and it's a standard suico pro sharpness i mean yeah uh it's just perfect like other all the other lens in, in all the other pro pro range lens and i have several of them then all of them are fantastic in the center yeah. obviously in the corners and from f4 i mean you don't have to stop down if you stop down maybe i mean it, you cannot even appreciate the, the 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 improvement at f4 you can shoot and you will get perfect sharpness and for me sharpness is critical if it's not sharp yeah, yeah. It, Absolutely. Uh, uh, for me if it's not super sharp uh it's it's not passing the the bar yeah okay absolutely yeah, and it's one of those things where obviously Olympus glass is pretty legendary and always has been, um, you know, even back in the sort of OM days. I mean, I'm old enough to know about uh, 35 mil uh, film cameras and stuff. And I had no, it. OM not I, you I, I know, I'm only 21. No. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, glass has always been our thing. You know, it's always been something that yeah. Olympus absolutely the technology. And when you see the technology and when you see things like uh, lens sync, and, and flooring coatings and and all this extra stuff that's going in there you know mm. that r d is pushing those boundaries that they're still um you know um making the technology that that's that's in the future and i think that this is something that we should all be proud of and like yeah, you say edge, edge to edge sharpness um sharpness from edge to edge is is pretty awesome on this lens mm. with all of our pro lenses yes so we have, let's have a look for some more questions. Um, okay. Um, a couple we of could, people asked yeah. about use with the EM5 Mark III. Yes, absolutely perfect fit and, you know, nice and compact and really well weighted with the body. Um, so, yeah, brilliant for the EM5 Mark III. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where because it's not huge, you could pretty much put it on everything and away mm. you go. So, yeah. Um, um, now we do have a question from Jack about 
uh, how they use the files when shooting sort of uh, the larger res files. Uh, I don't know if you can answer that in a fairly short answer Justin um, you know it says could these two landscape photographers explain how they use the files that you get when shooting high res have you ever done high res with the uh, landscape stuff uh, yep I have a couple times I'm trying to think trying to rack my workflow of what it was I believe what I've done in the past is I think I've converted it to a tiff and then worked with it that way and it seems to be a little nicer for the computers to handle um, yeah. and use it says do you have you have any experience with that? Uh, what I am doing, what I am doing, uh, as I said, I'm a sucker for for sharpness and for uh, to to squeeze all the the. I mean, I always say that if you use uh, this camera like any other camera of any other brand or whatever, then you're losing things. Okay, this is obviously a camera. You have the aperture and the shutter speed and all this, but after that, you have a lot of extra things, of extra uh, gimmicks or technology things that are really useful. And and sometimes we 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 forget a little bit to explain how useful they are. Then I use I use the high res shot extensively, but not because of the resolution. I don't care. With twenty megapixels, I have more than enough. Uh, I use because this way I can. Uh, I can overpass the 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 buyer filter. I get uh, better uh, dynamic range. I get uh, better uh, noise ra uh, noise uh, better noise ratio, and I get better colors, and I get le less chromatic aberrances and all, yeah. uh, aberrations and all these things. And then yeah. now that with this one, uh, I was so happy because with this one I can use it uh, handheld. Yeah. Okay. Then sometimes I use the high res, not because the high res, just because I cannot use live and D. Yeah. Because live and D, I only can use it with zero five seconds. If the action yeah. is happening faster, because yeah. I have a lot of light, then I switch to high res. Then uh, I use the the high res the high res file like any other file because I don't care about. Uh, then I just import it and I work with it like like any other file. I recommend you to use it too uh, because the the advantages that you get maybe maybe the if you use Lightroom maybe you are going to to think that the image is a little bit soft softer but just because the way that Lightroom is understanding the file yeah. then if you mm -hmm. put a little bit of clarity and a little bit of sharpness and like this you will see that it's much more it's it's really sharper yeah. okay yeah it's a fantastic tool too okay but okay. honestly i was i was using a lot with my em2 the em1 mark ii and i'm using a little bit less because the the fantastic life nd now okay this is what yeah. i'm doing with the high res files yes yeah, Tom mentions that high res mode is ace like live ND adds more dynamic range, which mm -hmm. obviously is what you're talking about. A bit more sharpness, yeah. a bit more uh, clarity, a bit more uh, contrast. Um, and that's exactly what you want with landscape yeah. photography, Absolutely. isn't it? Yes. Okay, so go on. What are you going to say, Moses? No, nothing. No, I was saying absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was saying yes, 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 yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, Claire? what have you got there for us so do you want to go over the pricing again and also when yes. the date when the date they're going to land and when the absolutely. date they're going to land yeah absolutely so you can pre-order now and um, they are priced at uh, 899 pounds 1099 dollars and 999 euros and we're looking at the beginning of july um, for shipping and availability um, so get your pre-order in nice and early yes OK, so um, I think we if you haven't got any more questions, I think we've gone through as many questions as we can. Obviously, um, follow both Moises and Justin on Instagram and see uh, what they've been doing with this lens. I'm sure there's going to be more shots out there. I literally can't wait. Sean says hats off to OM Digital for advancing our Olympus gear that we all love. Thanks, ladies, and thanks to our two awesome photographers. Sean, thank you. Thanks to everybody that's joined us, but mostly thanks to Moises and Justin, because obviously coming on at completely different
different parts of the world yeah. and giving us your experiences with the 825 has been brilliant uh, we I'm sure we'll be uh, having you on Coffee with the Clares again at some and point we'll, we'll make yeah. sure we send you a mug as well oh yeah guys <laughs> and, yeah, the yeah. and the shirt and the shirt and the shirt and a shirt. a shirt you want a shirt and a mug yeah. <laughs> we'll just okay. send you a box of merch <laughs> yeah get you a box of merch out um, but no, but it's, honestly, been, it's been a fantastic session and your images are utterly incredible and i can't wait to get my hands on the 8 to 25 when i can you know pry it out of claire's hands yeah, yeah. i, I already asked wait. for one <laughs> oh wonderful thank you so much guys really appreciate you uh, coming on and no doubt we'll see you again soon Sounds good. Thank you. See you, Justin. Right. OK, so Claire, that what was amazing. What a great live. Yeah, that oh, was I brilliant. And, and thank you to everyone who's watched us across the globe. Um, we hope to be back for much, much more of these and tune in to, I mean, there's loads of workshops and lives and everything happening all over the world. Um, so keep an eye out on all the different YouTube channels and the Facebook pages because there's lots, lots more to come. Yes, we are now one big global, happy global Olympus family. You know, the world is getting smaller, which means, you know, we're going to be doing more things uh, with our European, our American, our Australian uh, friends, Olympus family. Um, so it's great because we can introduce you to new shooters and new photographers. And I think that's yep. going to be fantastic. So wasn't it nice having, you know, photographers from from around the world on and thank it. you so much to Amanda and Charlotte who's been in the background and to Gavin and Sam who are always there pressing all the buttons and making comments come up because Claire and I are just like hands free and they all do it for us so <laughs> they um, do. thank you to our wonderful behind the scenes team and we can't wait to see you soon wonderful thank you guys see you again soon take care bye bye bye, bye.